In this video, we are going to talk about probably the weirdest smartphone to come out in 2019. Well, probably the weirdest smartphone to ever come out. This is the Nokia N9 PureView that's got this seven piece camera system. It's actually five cameras. One of these components in here is a flash and the other is a time of flight sensor. We'll break all this down in just a second. But this has been a pretty big year for smartphones and photography and what cameras are able to do on smartphones. Computational imaging has been the big deal. This was an early phone that was released this year came out in February when Nokia put out the N9. It was a moderately priced phone at $500 and it was a collaboration with a company called Light. You might remember Light. They made this crazy camera a couple years ago that had 16 lenses and most recently they brought similar technology into a collaboration with Nokia. Now most of you guys are probably familiar with the concept of computational imaging and how this has really made a huge impact on smartphones in the last couple years. We now have Night Sight that comes on things like the Apple iPhone 11 or the Google Pixel 3 and now Pixel 4. And the way Night Sight works is you hold the camera steady while it takes a series of images. It's going to fire off a couple different exposures and it's going to use pieces of those exposures to stitch together into something that gives you relatively low noise and a very high resolution. That's kind of how it works. So the principle here is rather than using one camera to do several different exposures, it's going to use five cameras that all fire at the same time. So it's an interesting problem. It creates some other interesting problems when it's solving one, you have others. And so I want to break this down and get into it real quick. I want to give a shout out today to our sponsor who are the awesome folks over at Skillshare.com. If you haven't seen Skillshare, you should check them out. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on photography, film production, design, and many other creative fields. A premium membership will give you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts in their fields. You can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work that you love. So I'll give you an example of a course that I think is outstanding. This is Dale McManus, iPhone photography, how to take pro photos on your phone. Phone. What I love about this the most is it is not really limited to iPhone. And as Dale says in here, he thinks of this process is kind of 10% gear and the rest of it's really your brain. And if you go through the list here and see what he's teaching, it's mostly about shot composition, vantage point, rule of thirds, creating depth, things that are just really important that could be applied to any smartphone or any camera technology. So if you want to get used to this whole concept of just shooting with your phone, I think this is an awesome place to start. Skillshare is also one of the most affordable learning platforms out there. An annual subscription costs less than $10 a month. So if you head over to Skillshare using the link below in the description, you can get a two month free trial. So you've got absolutely nothing to lose or even purchase. So just go check out Skillshare today by using that link in the description. And we give a special shout out and thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode of the Art of Photography. So the Nokia 9 PureView was released in the United States in February of 2019. I actually think this was a really interesting concept. You've got a very progressive camera system. So it's some what experimental, but it also comes at a decent price point. So this is packed into a phone that will run you about $500. So this is nowhere as expensive as what you're going to pay for an iPhone 11 or even a Google Pixel 4. In terms of industrial design, I think the phone is interesting. I also think that if you took off this crazy lens configuration, it gets a little bit bland. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but it's also not super dated. It's just nothing that I'm really excited about. This is part of the Android One program, which is interesting because that program basically guarantees phones that will have a pure Android experience. So there's not a lot of stuff that's on top of the OS. As a result, this is already upgraded to Android 10, which is a nice plus. The P OLED capacitive touchscreen is actually pretty decent. I'm not wild about the fingerprint reader, which works only some of the time. You're going to be entering your pen a lot as the face detection is not that great either, unless you're in really good light. However, the colors are, do render really nicely. And I think the size and the resolution are pretty good. I've actually edited a lot of images in Lightroom Mobile on here, and I like it just fine. It's fairly snappy in terms of performance, but also not nearly as good as higher powered phones, even in this same price range. And unfortunately, that's a theme that I'm going to keep coming back to. But we're not here to talk about the OS. We're here to talk about this crazy camera configuration. So what's going on here? In the main configuration, you have five cameras. And so these are all 28 millimeter equivalent wide angle cameras. They all have an aperture of f 1.8. The sensors are all pretty decent. They're all 12 megapixel with a 1.25 micron pixel pitch. So they do reasonably well in low light. Two of these cameras use a full RGB space and three of them are black and white and they're near full spectrum. They all work simultaneously together. We also have a flash, a time of flight 3D sensor for this bokeh rendering that I'll show you in a second and it will shoot 4K video. And speaking of video, since we do have 4K video output from the selfie camera as well as the main camera configuration, you can do some really cool stuff like split screen video where it's using both camera configurations to record at the same time or you can do a picture in picture. So this gives you some interesting options. So let's talk about the 
multiple lens configuration and why this is significant. So a couple of years ago when Light released this, this is the L16. This runs Android, but it is not a phone. There's no app store, but it works as the OS for the camera. There are 16 lenses on here. They all fire at the same time. They all take the same image. And then what the processor does is it actually stitches all that together. Now this also had variable resolution. So if it you were at its widest setting, it was like an 80 megapixel image. And then the more you zoomed in, the less cameras are being used and ends up being, I think, as low as a 12 or an 8. I can't really remember. But that's the idea behind this camera. Now, as the company says, light, they say that they use 16 cameras to get more light. Light says the same thing about the Nokia 9 PureView, that it gathers more light. Now, I do take issue with that statement. It's not accurate. You can't gather more light than what's available. But you can use different sensors and different lenses, and you can get the best qualities because they're all shooting at the same time. You can stitch those together into an image that's really clean at a pretty decent resolution. It's a 12 megapixel image in the end, but we do have two color sensor lenses on here or two color cameras. And so we can take the best of both of those. And then we also have the full spectrum black and white cameras. I did try them with an infrared filter and they will shoot infrared. So they're actually getting light beyond this visual spectrum. And what it's doing is it's using all those components to actually stitch together a really clean image in the end. So to take full advantage of the cameras on this smartphone, you do want to make sure that you go into the camera app and you do set it up to shoot raw images. You're going to get the most detail to work with, the most dynamic range. And I have to say, the images that I've got on this phone are some of the best that I've got on any smartphone. They're really clean. They really are incredible. And it does a really good job with all this stuff. Now, even though this is an Android One phone, you are going to notice that the camera app has been slightly modified. So for instance, we don't have night sight or a night mode in here. We have a different set of modes that are actually tuned to go with this camera, which makes sense. So I typically turn off modes that really aren't going to take advantage of this five camera configuration configuration. So square panorama, I really don't use much of, but we do have a bokeh mode. We have a monochrome mode. We have the pro mode, which lets you manually expose your images. We have time lapse and then the standard photo and video modes. One note that I want to make about the monochrome setting is it's actually only using the monochrome cameras. These are full spectrum. They do not have Bayer color array filters on them and they don't have low pass or high pass filters on them either. So you're actually getting near infrared light in the spectrum. Now, when you make images using the monochrome setting, they're going to come out on the raw files, very bright looking, but you can rescue all that highlight detail. It's just a little weird when you haven't worked with it much, but it really is amazing and it gives you true monochrome images and there aren't a lot of smartphones that allow you to do this. And so it's very unique in that regard. So you might be saying, hey, Ted, this is an incredible camera. It's at a really good price point. Why isn't this thing just flying off the shelves and beating the pants off of what Apple and Google are doing? Well, when you solve certain problems in this manner, you also create some other problems. So for instance, we have five lenses. They're all the same focal length. So you're not going to have the ultra wide or a portrait lens like we do on the Apple iPhone 11. You also don't have any kind of image stabilization on here. It's already doing a lot. And that is going to lead me to the next problem that really is the biggest beef that I have with this phone. It's doing a lot. So look, I understand that Nokia were trying to keep the price point down on this, but the processors they put in here are not current. It uses Qualcomm Snapdragon 845s, which are a couple years old now, and it's takes an enormous amount of processing to actually get your images stitched together in this phone. Now it does a pretty good job of doing that behind the scenes. So I can make an image, it starts processing in the background, I can continue to shoot, I can make more images. But if you're the kind of person who wants to just shoot something real quick and text it to a friend, you're gonna have to wait for the processing to end. It also gets really hot, especially if you're using this outdoors. It's like you can fry an egg on this all of a sudden. And the battery life is horrendous. Now this is a 3200 milliamp battery battery in here, they could have done a lot better. And yes, you can carry a power brick around. It does support fast charging, but so do a lot of other phones in this price point. It just should have had a bigger battery. So those are the biggest problems. And unfortunately, to people who want to work really quickly on their phone, those are going to be big problems, mainly the processor. I think if this was done with a more updated chipset or maybe even held off, I think it could have been a whole different ball game because I think the concept is actually pretty interesting. It's new. It's a different way of doing it. In fact, I think the whole industry is kind of in uncharted territory. There's a way the other camera manufacturers or the other smartphone manufacturers have approached their cameras. And for instance, Google and Apple have done it with one lens that will do multiple exposures. You just hold it still and then it adds an element of stitching into it. And they've had really good success with this. I think this is an alternative to this where you're using multiple cameras to shoot at the same time to achieve the same effect. It obviously worked really interestingly on the Light L16. And when you had the ability to get up to 80 megapixels or whatever it is at its widest setting, it 
it does some interesting things with computational imaging. But like I said though, the images that you can get with this phone are absolutely fantastic. They're clear, they're sharp, there's an enormous amount of dynamic range, particularly if you're willing to work with raw file formats where you can actually control how much shadow detail or how much highlight detail that you can bring back. You can get, really get a pretty good dynamic range, especially when you consider that this is just a cell phone. But the biggest regret is I don't think this phone was given a very fair shot. It was crippled from the beginning with dated hardware. And then also I say that because this was announced in February and it's already discontinued. So it didn't even stay on the market for a year, which first of all tells you how brutal and competitive the smartphone market is right now. And then especially with new technology like this, if you don't get it right out of the gate and it's not selling, then it's time to move on. I have no idea if this is something that Nokia are going to try to continue or not. We'll have to see. I would love to hear your thoughts. Do you think a multiple lens setup has a place in the world and is it beneficial? Leave me a comment below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.